guys, hope you are doing great. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. So the last couple of videos I've done have been on my new X5M competition, but today I'm standing here with my 2024 M4 Competition X Drive because I want to do a little discussion video on, now that I've had this for a couple thousand miles, um, give you some of my impressions and also my thoughts on, um, if you've watched this channel previously, I also had a G80 M3. Uh, would I rather have the M3 or the M4 and just kind of my thoughts on uh, picking one or the other and pros and cons for both. So as I said, I've owned this car for about 2,000 miles now. It's been about three months. Uh, I actually, most of the majority of those miles, um, I actually just got back from a uh, quick work trip where I drove this uh, on just kind of a little road trip. Uh, it was about four hours each way. Uh, car was super comfortable. So for hauling suitcases, we were able to fit three pretty decent size uh, suitcases back here. You can see I've got my son's uh, basketballs back here now. So trunk space is awesome. Also uh, rear seat room uh, is op awesome. So let's talk about first about why you would pick this over an M3. So we, we all know uh, these cost more uh, than the M3s if you're specking them from the factory. The MSRP is just slightly higher. And double whammy, you're also losing more value because these do depreciate quicker than an M3. And it's just, I think it's because everybody wants an M3 because they're more practical. You can use them for family vehicles. Now in my situation, uh, I've already got a family vehicle, so having a coupe is not a drawback to me. Um, actually, in some ways, this is since this is my fun card, that's actually a big plus. The other pluses are that you can actually find these on dealer lots. I've looked at um, here in Kansas City, a lot of the dealer lots, they have, you know, if not one, two or three um, M4s available. Some of those are convertible. Some of those uh, are coupes like this. I personally wouldn't go for the convertible, but uh, that's, I guess, just is not my taste. Some people are into that, uh, but I have seen a couple of those available. So I guess I haven't checked in on order times on M3s lately. Um, go back in time, six months, it was it was 18 months, I'm guessing it's probably still, still at least a year just because that is the more desirable unit. And why is that? There's probably a lot of things that go into that. Number one, being more practical, uh, being able to use it for a family vehicle. You know, the other one is the M3 badge has been around for a lot more. That's been a lot of people's dream cars for a long time. Is So I wish I'd have driven the G80 and the G82 back to back. That way I give more accurate kind of driving impressions. But, um, you know, overall I'd say, you know, pretty much the same. It drives exactly the same, which would make sense because this has pretty much the same dimensions. I think this one is just slightly smaller um not but not by much i mean we're talking we're talking very small small measurement differences you know this is just a little bit closer to that perfect 50 50 uh weight balance compared to the m3 but you know overall it's it's pretty much the same car just different style and right here where the m3 um in front of this rear tire has this really um you know big kind of noticeable bump here that looks pretty cool. Um, it's usually wrapped in some kind of paint protection film. Um, this one has, it's more, where you don't have the second door, um, instead of just jumping right into the, the extra wide um, rear tires, it has more room to just kind of gradually flow back there. You know, personally, I could go either way. I think they both look great. Um, but where, you know, this has the coupe design, I think that makes this one just overall look a little bit more special, just if you're talking overall design. You know, I feel like if you stack this up next to an R8 or, uh, you know, some other supercars like that, I feel like this fits in a lot better where it's a coupe. Where it's the M3, it's like, yeah, that's a that's a fast sedan, but it's still a sedan. So one difference from my M3 to this M4 is I did have the black wheels. Um, this is the same style, just not the same color. Uh, I do miss those black wheels because those look pretty good, but this is also a pretty good color. I like it where it's a darker gray. If this was more of a chrome, I uh, probably wouldn't be as big a fan of them. So probably the biggest difference between the two is the front door. And now I'm, I'm gonna say, you know, 90% of the time, I'm not taking my kids with me in this car. It's usually just me. Um, having this big door, um, where, you know, on the M3 look, it's a little more, I guess, kind of a stubby door. Um, having this big opening makes it a little bit easier to get into for, for me personally, especially being a taller guy. You got, I feel like, more room to kind of swing your legs into it. One thing, though, if you did get the carbon bucket seats, which obviously I didn't, you would get kind of robbed, I feel like, in the M4 because the M3, you open the back seat, you open the rear door, and you can see the, the back of these and show off your cool carbon bucket seats. The M4, they're just kind of hidden. Um, which, I mean, the fronts look cool and everything, but like the back, I mean, that's kind of the, the money shot there. Yeah, the rear seat, I would say it's it's not that much smaller than what you get in the M3. It's a little bit tighter, obviously, just because of uh, space concerns here. Um, you know, my two kids where they're two and six, it's really easy for them to get in back. My two-year-old, I kind of have to help him into his, his car seat there. When he gets a little bit older and he's able to climb into his own car seat, like my, my older one, then it's going to be really 
um, really super easy then at that point. Yeah, they fit really well like back there. I feel like you could fit um, smaller adults in the back as well for, or even for a road trip and they'd be pretty comfortable. So um, very spacious in the back. I think that's probably the biggest plus I got from going for the M4 over the M2 is the, uh, the back of the car is a lot more usable than I think what you would get in a two series. The other nice thing is where there is no back door. Usually with the kids in the back, I gotta worry about the, you know, the rear window controls, getting those locked, getting the rear doors locked uh, so they can't open them on their own here. They're just, you put them in the back and they're contained, which is kind of nice. So the biggest difference between my M4 and my M3 would be the paint job. So my uh, M3, it got a lot of attention for, if you guys have seen those videos, it was a frozen uh, matte paint. And that got a lot of attention because people were just like, is that a wrap, what is that? It looked, it looked awesome. I'll admit, but uh, it did cause a lot of anxiety for me. You know, just because it's a little different, a little different to to care for. You know, if something did happen, it would be a little bit harder to uh, get it replaced or fixed. So most of the attention that my M3 got was based on the matte paint. I feel like if it just had kind of a regular paint job, uh, kind of like this one does, it wouldn't get near the attention it does. This one gets, just gets attention because it looks really good. You know, I had the M3 for about six months. So I've had the M4 for about three months now. I'd say, you know, in that time, way more people have approached me just asking about the car and uh, questions like that and telling me how, how awesome it looks. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I would say this, this style grabs a lot more attention. And like I said, um, I think just the M3 being a sedan, it blends in a little bit more, which that can be a good thing too. Uh, but for me, having the coupe as a fun car um, is a huge bonus. So those are some of the things to consider. Uh, I would say on the you know the pros list for the the M4, I see a lot of videos kind of why you would choose an M3 over an M4. Um, so I thought I'd do one the other way as somebody who's who's owned one for a while now and give you guys um, some of my thoughts on it and, and just how much I'm loving this car so far. You know, I have enjoyed ownership experience of this one uh, much more than, than my N3. Like I said, a lot of that's been due to the paint where this is just a regular paint. Um, I don't have any anxiety about it. I know if something happens, it can be fixed. Uh, a lot easier to care for, nothing special I have to do for it. I have ceramic coated this one, so it makes it super easy to clean. As I said, I just got this back from a road trip. Um, I haven't even cleaned it since, and it's, it is pretty dirty, but I mean, from here you can't really tell. Uh, thanks to the ceramic coat, uh, just makes things look really nice and glossy. So that's my thoughts. Uh, look for more F M4 videos and also X5M videos coming soon. I want to do a driving impressions on this one, get the POV cam uh, hooked up and take this one down a back road and kind of um, you know, show you guys how this thing handles because it's a lot of fun. That's going to wrap things up for today's video. As always, appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the videos and subscribing as well. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one.